Good evening, everyone. My name is Sherry Mayberry, and I want to welcome you um, to our webinar tonight uh, with an introduction to GWIZ education and also talking about lesson planning for mixed age groups. Before we get started, um, I know we'll have people coming. We're starting right at 7 so because we have a lot to cover and want to get through it. We are recording tonight, and the recording will be on our website. Uh, probably sometime tomorrow under that training and support tab that you see at the top of your screen right now. Um, it will be, it will live under that tab under webinar training. Also, if you can't hear, and that's going to be tough because you're going to probably reach out, but you need to make sure you select your audio as we get started. I've sent a note out to everybody um, because you do have to select your computer or your phone or, you know, how you want to listen. As we work through the uh, webinar tonight, you'll see on the right, top right hand corner of your screen, a little gray bar that says questions. And as we work through it or get through the webinar and you have questions, you can type them in that box. Just hit the send button um, and I'll try to respond as we are working through the webinar. Beth Smith will be our trainer tonight. So if I can respond in the background, I will. And there'll probably be times when she's going to ask you things that ask for a response. And that's where you will type your response is right there in that question box. And then just hit send. Nobody can see your responses, so you don't have to worry about spelling or anything like that. Um, but we just want to let you know how you can communicate with us throughout the webinar. Um, we have folks from everywhere um, this evening on the webinar, or at least that who registered. They were from a little bit all the way from California, Texas to the East Coast. Um, but we want to get started. Um, again, if you got a question, type it in that question box. We'll see it. And I want to introduce you to Beth Smith, who will start with the training. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody had a great Tuesday. Um, I'm in Florida, and it's been very hot here. Hoping we don't have a big thunderstorm in the middle of this, but it looks pretty good right now. Um, and Jerry's right. We have people from all over. I just checked the registration list. There was even someone from Hawaii. So um, literally all over the place. Uh, I also wanted to let you know, I looked through the registration list. I've read everybody's um, comments about what they wanted to learn or what they were looking forward to learning about, what their biggest challenges are, um, where you're all from. And it was very interesting. There were some pretty common threads that ran through everything that I read. Um, for instance, what do you do with the little ones? Um, or I have a lot of little ones. Or I just am having trouble keeping everybody on task. So a lot of the similar um, challenges, let's just say. Nothing that can't be overcome, but uh, challenges nonetheless. So a big part of this webinar is also just to share ideas. Um, and share thoughts and ask questions because I also noted we have customers on here who use GWiz or maybe used it in the past. And then we have quite a few people who are not currently using GWiz as their curriculum. So a good mix, I would say. Um, so those of you who are customers, if at any time you want to chime in with your two cents, we would love to hear from you. Uh, we have tried in the past unmuting folks and seeing if we can actually hear them talking, we can certainly try that. Or you can type your ideas in the question box where um, Cherry was talking about earlier. Because I know sometimes there's lots of things going on in the background. So anyway, GWIS Education, little background for those of you who are not familiar with who we are. We started this company in 2012 because we felt that there was definitely a need for something for family child care. For those of you who have a mixed age group, you work in your home. A lot of times it's just you. You don't have a helper. Uh, and so in looking at the curriculum options in 2012, there were a lot of really wonderful curriculum options out there, but they were written for centers. They were not written for homes. And so we felt there was a need out there for something written specific to be used with a mixed age group in a home setting. Hence, that's how GWIS was born. Um, over the course of the past you know, 11 years, we have changed and added and morphed into something that we think is even more tailor-made to what you're looking for. Uh, and tonight, what I hope to do is focus a lot on our lesson plans and how we do those lesson plans. And I also want to share with you our newest component that's going to be added starting in September, which is called our weekly activity plan. Um, a component that came about because 
there were many states that were requiring folks, even though they had a lesson plan booklet, they still had to post a block plan or do a block plan. So we noodled around a lot of different things, looked at the different states and came up with a new component that we could add to the curriculum that hopefully will save you a little bit of time, make your life a little bit easier. Um, and if you're not a customer, just another piece to the puzzle. So where I am right now is I'm actually logged in as you would if you were a customer because I want to take you into a teacher's guide and really dig in there. But before I do that, I want to highlight a few things that are available on our website if you're not a customer because a big part of what we do at GWIS is also supporting you through the creation of educational resource materials, through our free trainings and webinars. Um, we want to be a place that you can come when you need some help. And so we are always adding to these resources and adding to what we have available, both to customers and non-customers. So the things I want to show you right now are really, they're things that if you're not a customer, you'll be able to access. And you're welcome to download, you're welcome to share. In fact, we encourage you to share. So under About the Curriculum, we have our user's guide. Now our user's guide is an extensive document. It's about 90 pages in length and it's our training manual. So if you're using the curriculum, this is a, com a component that you'll wanna have available on your computer. Some providers do wanna print it out and put it in a booklet and put it on the shelf so they can refer to it. Um, but you don't have to, you can just save it to your computer if you want. And it's broken down into these sections that you'll see here. So your role, a whole section on individualization and authentic assessment, an entire section on developmental areas and learning indicators. And so those of you who are familiar already know this, but we cover 10 developmental areas and 40 different learning indicators, which are skills. And we'll talk about that as we look through the teaching guides and look at the lesson plans. Um, the philosophy, research, and more behind the curriculum, meeting the needs of all children and gee whiz, this covers linguistic and cultural differences, developmental disabilities, all kinds of things in that section. Uh, gee whiz in your day, that talks about setting up your daily schedule, it talks about guided versus free play, it talks about um, your learning interest centers if you set those up, and then implementing is about the different components in the curriculum. You could choose just to go into each section of this, so like let's say I want to just look at the gee whiz in your day, I could just go to that section, and then over here you'll see all the different parts to that section, and you could save it to your computer if you wanted, up here you can save it, download it to your desktop, download it to your download folder, or you can print it out, the choice is yours. But again, everything that I'm showing you right now, you do not need to be a customer to access. I will say, if you are a customer, this is a really important piece for you to have in your arsenal. So be sure that you've either downloaded it to your computer or you have a copy of it printed out because it is, it is super important. Um, and then again, back under about the curriculum, uh, we have a slide, slide deck about the components that are included in the curriculum because what I'm going to go through tonight, I'm going to talk and I'm going to actually use the real curriculum so you can see the real thing. But if you just want a snapshot of all the different components, it's in that tab right there. A lot of people really want to see the yearly outline because it tells you what our units are going to be for the year. So I am going to stop here and pause just for a second to go over this. I'm actually going to pull up the 2023-24. Our outline is not a chronological as in January to December. It is a school year, so September um, through uh, the following August. And with that said, most people at this point are thinking about back to school, thinking about September. So let's look at our September units. They are my five senses and healthy me. And what this, this, uh, what this outline does is it shows you all the different subtopics within that unit we're going to touch on. Um, it's going to talk a little bit about what STEM focus we're going to have because we build that into the curriculum. Some units, obviously, like my five senses, will have a huge STEM focus. Others, like maybe, well, I don't know, all of those actually have a pretty good STEM focus, but some of them are going to be more so than others, but we do hit on that. What you will notice when you look at this, if you're not familiar with GWIS, is that you don't see letters written in, numbers written in, colors or shapes. And there's a reason behind that. We write those things into the lesson plans as they become 
uh, meaningful as they're meaningful to the children. And, and we also have a component for letters called Letters and Literacy. I'll show you what that looks like to help you expose those children who are more advanced to letters, letter sounds, words in a way that's meaningful. So within the experiences we have planned, that's another way that we adapt for different um, developmental levels. Um, so that's all part of what we're going to go over. So this is for the entire year of 23, 24, you'll see there's two units in every month. Each unit is 10 days. We do not date them. So you could really do the unit My Five Senses at any time of the year you wanted to. Um, the exceptions that I would say are the ones we include in the summer tend to have a lot of outside things, but that doesn't mean you couldn't do them at another time. It just means we plan a lot of outside activities for summer. So um, if you want a copy of this, you can certainly download it again to your, to your computer clicking here or print. Now I'm on a PC, it might look a little, little different on a Mac. If you do want to see our 2022-23, it's right here. So if you want to see what August of this year is, um, you can see that here, but we're going to actually look at the August curriculum. There's a sample lesson plan I'm not going to go into because we're going to go into the real thing right here. If you want to see your state alignments and approvals, this is where you will go. So you'll click on it and there is a, um, all the states in the United States are listed here. And if you click on your state, you can see like Ohio, you can click here, you can see the, um, our alignment documentation. We also have included links directly to the Ohio standards if you want that. Same thing here. So for every state, you will see a similar layout. Um, and that's under state alignments and standards. And we are approved, uh, an approved curriculum in Florida, um, North Carolina, Delaware, Minnesota, Illinois, uh, Nebraska, <laughs> I had to think, Pennsylvania. And I think that might be all the ones, but we are fully aligned with every state and in, including Head Start standards. Um, so that's all about the curriculum. Under the educational resources, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there because I want to get into the curriculum, want to get into the lesson plans, but the, all of these things are free and available to you. So for instance, under resources for providers, we have developmental checklists, we have health and safety resources, we have healthy, helpful tools, we have information about developmental disabilities. And then when seasonal and holiday activities are posted, you'll find them there, um, which we send out an email about. So we are always adding to this, to what's available. So be sure that you keep coming back to our website to check. And also we do send out emails, obviously, when we post new things. All right. Any questions on anything I touched on right now before I dig into an actual teacher's guide and we talk about lesson plans? Any questions at all? Sherry, anything out there that I need to address? Um, I don't see anything. And again, don't forget, just type it in that question box and um, I'll be able to share it with everyone. But we don't have anything. But, you know, if you think about it after Beth gets started, well, I'll stop her and get it answered for you or send you the answer uh, personally. Yes, and before I go any further, I do want to ask a question. So use the question box and type the answer in. Are you currently using GWiz? Yes, or are you not using GWiz? No. Just type in yes or no, and I just want to get a ballpark idea of who I have live on the webinar right now. I know who registered, but it's also good to know kind of who's on here. So how many oh, I have? All right, so far, as we scroll through, I'm getting all yeses. All right, let me expand that. Um, a couple of no's but mostly yeses. Okay, all right, good. Well, that'll help. All right, those not of you who- Not at this time. And I'm assuming they may say, not at this time, they may have used it in the past, is Correct. what I'm interpreting that to mean. Exactly, um, exactly. So those of you who are yeses, if you wanna chime in, like I said, be sure to just raise your hand and then we'll either try to unmute you or you can just type your thoughts in the in the box and Sherry can read them out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the member portal to the tab that says this month's units. Now, I logged in. When you're a customer with GWiz, you will use your email and a password to log in and you will automatically land right here on this page. So um, you don't have to dig around. It automatically puts you right where you need to be for the current units. And right now we have actually four units available. Normally it would be two, but we're in what we call the crossover time frame. So for those of you who are not customers, what happens is on the 20th of the month, we post the next month's units. So for instance, these August units we're gonna take a peek at, 
were posted on July the 20th, and they will live right here until on or around September the 5th when they will be removed from the website. We do send an email out and remind you, say, hey, if you haven't downloaded and saved and backed up those files, now's the time to do it, because once they're gone, they're too big for us to email. So we do alert you with at least one email, most of the times two, that says, hey, we're getting ready to take them down. So on August the 20th, looking ahead, that's when our September units will be posted, and they will be right here on this page. But right now, we actually have the August, and if I scroll down all the way, you would see the July units are still available. Those July units are going to stay there until around August the 5th, so another couple of days. So if you are not a customer and you subscribe right now, you'll actually get access to four units you can download instead of just two. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this first unit for um, August called So Strong, and this is all about taking care of your body and building muscles and all kinds of fun things. But what I want to do is scroll down here to our teacher's guide. So for those of you who are customers, you're very familiar with what our teacher's guides look like and how they're laid out. But we do have some folks on here who are not so familiar. So what I want to do is just briefly go over what's in, in here, and then we're going to really dig into a lesson plan. So each unit always starts out with an introduction about what's what the unit's going to be about. Reminders will be up here in the yellow box. There's a table of contents here. These teacher's guides run anywhere from 34 to 38, 39 pages. It really just depends on the unit, and I'll explain that in a second when we get to the back of the guide. Then this is an overview of what activities are planned each day. Um, and you'll see we have an exploring together, which is like a group time experience every day, two center experiences every day, and an infant experience every day. In addition to that, we also provide six school age experiences, and I'll explain that in more detail as we go through. Um, and each one of these can be continued for more than one day. So those are not, they don't fall necessarily within the 10 days, but you can pick and choose to do those whenever you want if you have school age children. So what we're going to do now is we're going to really dig into a lesson plan. So one of the most important things about GWiz versus a lot of other curriculum options out there is that when we write this, we write it with the intention of you have a daily lesson plan that covers all your children, everybody from an infant to a school ager if you have school age children, and I mean after school. And that's no easy task, obviously, and it's no easy task for you to teach all those ages and all those developmental levels at the same time. But what we've tried to do is we try to make it a little bit easier for you. So what we do first and foremost is, and there's a whole webinar we do called The Why Behind Experiences, it's recorded, it's on our website, is we help you see that when you're doing activities with the children, you're covering multiple developmental areas at the same time. So for instance, sometimes we think like, okay, it's an art activity. Well, yeah, it is art. They might be painting, let's say. But it's a lot of other things too. It's social and emotional because they're engaging with each other. It's language because they're talking. It's science, maybe they're mixing colors of paint. It could be math. Um, it, it could be the shape of the paper, it might be a circle. Uh, it could be, Music, if you have music on in the background, there's so many different things that a simple activity like art can cover in terms of developmental level or areas, and that's really what we're all about. We're about making it easier for you to cover so many more areas just doing what you do. So when you look at this lesson plan, what you'll see is you'll see the unit name, you'll see the focus for the day, which is what is exercise, and then you're going to see these picture codes. And you'll, you know, if you're a customer, you should know what those picture codes are about. Um, for those of you who are customers, I'm going to give you a little test. Those picture codes correspond to what? If you know the answer, type it in the box. I'm curious to see if my customers have their thinking caps on this evening. <laughs> okay. We did have a comment, and Beth, when, well, I'm sorry, you've already gone into the teacher guide, but the new button that you can download all the files at once. Yep, yep, uh, I'll cover somebody that wants then. You, uh, somebody wants you to repeat the question. Okay, these picture codes right here correspond to what? And I'll give you a hint, there's 10 of them. 10 what? And it's not fingers or toes. <laughs> well, we've got state standards, but that's close. 
Uh, you're get, yeah, getting there. Yeah. Uh, indicators of progress that that we're getting warm. <laughs> Um, I'll give you a hint. It's two words. Developmental indicators. We got it. <laughs> All right. So yes, the 10 developmental indicators or areas are picture code. We use picture codes to correspond to those. So most of you in your state standards will see standards related to language development, standards related to math knowledge, standards related to physical development and health, standards related to social studies, right? You've seen them all in your standards and you're required to meet them all, right? So what we've done is we made this a little bit easier. So when you see these picture codes, what it's telling you is it's telling you during the course of this one day, just one day, if you do everything that we planned in the GWIS curriculum with the children, you will hit on all of these developmental areas, which are the heart is social and emotional, language, physical development and health, approaches to learning, literacy knowledge, science knowledge, music, social studies, creative arts, math knowledge, and logic and reasoning. So all of those areas of development which are going to correspond to those areas you're seeing in your state standards. All right, and we're going we're gonna to get into more detail on that in a second. We also include health and safety every day. We have a transition idea every day. We have a teaching tip every day. Over here in this box, the blue box, are words we want you to use in conversations with children. Well, why the heck do we want you to do that? We want you to do that because when children hear words like hydrated in context with a conversation with you, they will begin to understand what that word means. And then as they get older and more verbal, they will be able to use the word the way it's meant to be used and, and understand what it means. So. Just because they're little doesn't mean you can't use words like that because as you use them over and over and in context, they will begin to understand what they mean. Um, these are just additional ways you can continue to enhance vocabulary and language with the children during the course of the day. So let's talk about our Exploring Together experience. All right, so you're gonna see a sunshine symbol. This means you can take it outside if you would like. It's a great activity to do outdoors. Sometimes it means that the activity needs to be outdoors. When you read it, you'll be able to tell. Then over here, this is the get moving. Is It means it does gross motor. There's gonna be some gross motor skills involved. So if you see that, you know they're gonna be moving around and building gross motor skills. More picture codes. Right now, remember at the top, I said those are the developmental areas for the entire day. These are the developmental areas for this specific activity. So let's see. Looks to me like if I'm doing my counting right, there's 11 different areas you're going to address. Why 11? Well, this one actually hits on all of them. Plus, we have a different symbol for music than we do for creative arts and so there's actually two symbols that correspond to one area of creative arts, but music is its own separate thing with us. So language, social and emotional, creative arts, math knowledge, science knowledge, literacy knowledge, logic and reasoning, music, physical development and health, social studies, and, and approaches to learning. All of those areas will be addressed in some way, shape, or form during this one activity. And we'll, I'll show you in a second how we even take that a step further into the specific skills that are addressing under those 10 areas. But just know, when you do a GWIS activity, we help you by covering multiple developmental areas in one fell swoop, all right? So then we talk about the activity and the materials you're gonna need to do the activity. The first bullet point focuses on the why behind the activity highlight some of the important things about why you're doing this. And then it just goes into steps about what you're gonna do as you do the experience with the children. Sometimes with these, ex these exploring togethers, we even have an extension, um, which means you can just expand upon that activity and take it a step further or do something else in addition to it. It's not something you need to do, but it's something you could do. Um, and then over in this box, we have open-ended questions. These are questions we want you to ask the children as you're doing this experience. Well, why do we want you to do that? Well, we have a whole webinar on that, but asking open-ended questions is a great way to engage children in back and forth conversations and get them thinking. So one of the things that we realize again at GWIS and we stay in tune with is the fact that you are being evaluated in some using some type of an environmental rating scale, whether that is class, 
whether that is Vickers, whatever it is, right? And a big part of that is your engagement with the children. And so these open-ended questions are a wonderful way to engage with the children. They also help you evaluate where children are developmentally, and they help you scaffold that activity to take it in different directions based on children's needs and or interests. And so those open-ended questions are very, very important. So not to say you're going to use all of them. We give you a whole list of them. You can pick and choose which ones seem the most appropriate. And it might be if you have a younger group that's not very verbal, you might not ask those open-ended questions of them, but you might in some way, shape, or form engage them in a non-verbal fashion. You know, when you talk about what type of exercises do you like best, um, they could maybe show you which ones they liked best. Um, anybody have any questions about how we do our large group? We don't call it circle time because it's not a sitting still kind of thing. Most of the time, the children are going to be engaged either doing something, playing a game, exploring something. Um, there's a lot of hands-on going on in this. Any, any questions from those of you who are current customers about this that I can answer? And those of you who are not, any questions, comments I can answer before I move to the second part of this one day? Um, there was a previous question about um, how many weeks are in the themes, and I think I put the answer because I thought a lot of people might wonder about that, so I copied that and answered that for everybody to see. Two units, 10 days per unit, so 20 days. Um, don't have any questions at this point, Beth. No one's okay. typed any in. So. All right, so I'm going to move to the next page, which is the second part of a lesson plan. Again, you're going to see that same use of the picture codes, right? Right here and right here. The difference is with these pink experiences, these are meant to be small group experiences that they can either do on their own or with you guiding, not leading, but guiding and supporting the activity. Um, so they're slightly different. Now, we know you've got children all over the place. You have two-year-olds, some of which might be functioning like toddlers, some might be functioning like threes. You have four-year-olds at some days, they might be functioning like a two-year-old or they might be functioning like a six-year-old. We know it's challenging. So what we've done is you will see with some of the experiences, not all, but some, and this is a good day to look at this because it's different on each day. Oh, I went a little too far. Um, oops, sorry, went too far there. Here we have taken this one experience and we've broken it apart and adapted it for different, now this is a key thing here, different developmental ages, not chronological ages. So when you see toddlers, twos, and threes right here, right? When you see that, that's how they're functioning. So think about it this way. It's children functioning as a toddler, two, or three and children functioning as a four or an advanced preschooler. What I encourage you to do is read the entire experience and think about each individual child in your program. Which way would work best for them? Because again, you might have a three-year-old who has extremely good fine motor skills and could do this experience more like a four or an advanced pre preschooler because they could peel their own stickers in this case. You might also have a four-year-old struggling a little bit with fine motor, right? And they might need you to do what's mentioned here, where you're going to partially stick them on the edge of the table. You know your children. You know where they are. You can read this experience and say, oh, yes, this way would work great with Bridget, but this way would work much better with Jose. You know your children. We don't. But what we've done and the reason we try to make lesson planning easier is we've given you options. Does this mean that's all the possible options? Absolutely not. You may have a child that you need to adapt even further. And that is where your skill set comes in, right? We've given you, it's like I say, we, you know, it's like building a house. I always say it's like, that's what GWIS is like. It's the foundation. When you build a house, your foundation is generally the same. It doesn't matter whether you're building a really small house or a mansion. You're going to build that foundation the same way. And it needs to be built right and it needs to be built strong. And so that's why we do what we do by helping you reach so many different developmental areas in one activity, for instance, and also giving you adaptations that then 
you've got the foundation and you can take it, you can expand upon it, you can add more ideas to it, you can scaffold it. There's lots and lots and lots you can do, but we've built that, that foundation for you. Then there's gonna be other experiences like this one, dancing to, that is dancing is exercise, which they're, the children will automatically adapt and modify that based on where they are developmentally on their own. You might need to supervise a little more if you have toddlers to make sure they don't get too crazy dancing. Um, but again, they're gonna adapt and modify based on where they are. They're gonna move their bodies in ways that are appropriate for them based on their development in terms of physical development. So they're gonna adapt, they're gonna modify. And then down at the bottom, we have our purple experience, which is our infant experience. This is designed to be done one-on-one -on -one with an infant. Um, it does not mean that like let's go bouncing is something that you can't do with other children, but it just means that you know it is something designed for an infant. All right, so questions or comments regarding, oh, and we build open-ended questions into these two, sorry. Um, questions, comments on this second half of one day of gee whiz that I can answer. Remember picture codes, correlate to the developmental areas. So you're hitting on all of these again and um, the adaptations for different developmental ages, not chronological ages. Any comments from our current customers? Any additional ways that they adapt or modify? Thoughts, ideas, anything you'd like to share? Everybody's quiet tonight. They must be tired. One thing I did notice, um, and it just depends on your screen, in the top right-hand box where you're typing in your questions, you can collapse that by just hitting that orange um, arrow. If what Beth is pointing to, if your, if your box is covered up what she's seeing, I just realized that on my own computer because it's a much smaller screen. Um, if you need to do that, do that. Um, but we don't have any comments, Beth. All right. Okay. So this is one way, what I've covered right here just briefly has been some of the main ways that we try to make lesson planning much, much easier for those of you that work with mixed age groups in your home setting. You will also find that we use things for our lesson plans that you should have around the house like a disposable plastic cup or stickers. Um, we try to use things that you would have on hand uh, here. Instead of a fancy water table, you could use a water table, but you can also just use a plastic tub. So we try to use things that are there at, at the ready because we know you don't have time to spend a lot of time gathering things or money to go out and buy a lot of things. So we're very cognizant of the fact that you are not in a center or in a school where you might have unlimited funds and, and unlimited space and unlimited help. <laughs> Instead, you're in your home and you have a, a lot to do every day. So in the lesson plans, there are actually 10 days in each unit. Somebody asked that question, which amounts to five days a week, right? Because most people don't have them during the weekend, but a lot of actually do. Given that we have so much in here, we hear from providers all the time that a lot of times they can't get it all done anyway. And so they may either do an activity more than once, which we highly encourage. If the children are engaged with it, keep it going. You know, do it more than once. Do it for a whole week if they really enjoy it. Then they have a chance to really build upon their, their play. Um, but if, the, you know, it, other than that, there's a lot in here to get done, especially when you have a lot of other things to do during the course of your day. So I think for most providers, they find that 20 days is, is enough for, for a month. So after the 10 days of lesson plans, we have what our school age or after school. These were added because providers said, please give me something to do for my school age and my after school children because, you know, I just need ideas. I want some things to do. So what you'll see here is you'll see these experiences um, like this one. We're talking about taking care of ourselves. They're going to learn how to make a splint. And um, this is a good one to show you, too, because you'll see the YouTube link. We use technology in GWiz for a purpose, which is the way it should be used. Um, you will find links to things like this to help you, right? In this case, learn how to make a splint. But the children could also watch this with you and learn how to make a splint. 
when we do units, um, let's say we're doing a unit about the farm. Well, not everybody lives near a farm. Not everybody's been to a farm, but there's some wonderful YouTube videos out there about farms and about learning about farming, learning about cows or horses or pigs. So what I will do is I'll do some research and find some good links to some very short, and I'm talking a few minutes, videos that you can share with the children and then talk about it. Like watch part, stop it. Watch part, what, stop it. Ask those open-ended questions. But what it does is it opens the world. I mean, that's the one thing technology has done for us is it's opened the world. So I haven't been to Africa. I would love to go someday. But I, And I would love to see giraffes just roaming around on the plains, but I haven't seen it yet. But I can go to Nat Geo Kids and I bet you I can find a video of African, um, of, uh, giraffes roaming the plains in Africa and I can use that with the children so they can see how they move and how they eat and the sounds that they make and so technology has a place and that's how we use it so you will occasionally see those links built into the lesson plans yet another way we save you some time because I'm doing that research for you. I'm looking for those videos. Sometimes if it's a longer one, I'll make a note, say, hey, you might only want to watch a little bit of this and always, always preview them ahead of time before you use them with the children just to make sure they're what you want them to be. And if they're not, there's a lot of them out there. So um, anyway, there are six activities in the back for school-age children on these pages. And if you don't have school-age children, you wouldn't need to use these. However, if you do have advanced preschoolers who are getting ready maybe to go to kindergarten, you might want to read through some of these because you might find that they would really enjoy them. So um, they don't necessarily have to be limited to just school-aged children. If you have those children after you read, you're like, oh, yeah, I have a couple that would really like doing this. By all means, then you can do that. Then the next part of it is our story props. Uh, sometimes our story props might be a book that have words in them. This one happens to be story props that have the text in the teaching guide. So here it's stories called Healthy Henry, and here's the text for the story. The teaching guide will tell you how to use the props and when to use the story. The props are a separate file and you print those out. That is one thing in GWIS you would need to print is the story props and the teaching tool which comes in the second unit because they're manipulative. You would want to be able to print them out and use them. A lot of the other things, like even like our family letters, you don't necessarily need to print them out. You can attach them to an email as a PDF file and just send them away. That way they don't get lost in the diaper bag. Um, so that's just the story. Then here on this page we have directions for our make it sheets. There are two of those in each unit, and I'll explain what they are in a second, and our Let's Read Together booklet. So our Make It sheets are not color cut and paste sheets. Um, we have sheets that they will use at home. The main goal is to send something home that can continue the learning process in a fun and interactive way. So for instance, this first one is called Fishing for Exercises. And each one of these little cards here that they're gonna cut apart has an exercise. And they're gonna put them in an empty box and then they're gonna play a game at home where they pull them out and everybody has to do the exercise. Um, the second one is a stop and go that we're gonna be playing a game and then this way they can play the stop and go game at home as well. And then at the bottom, each unit has what's called Let's Read Together booklets. They are available in English and Spanish. Um, the Make It Sheets are too, in case if, if there is text on them. And this is a booklet that you can use in your program if you want to enhance literacy skills. And then it's really meant to go home so that the parents or guardians continue to read to their child. Very simple, very short, just a little booklet. At the end of that book, guess what? Excuse me, we put some open-ended questions on the last page for the parent or guardian to ask their child after they read the story. Um, and then at the end, we even include an entire page for children who are ready to talk more about letters, letter sounds, and more advanced math concepts. Those are right here on this page. And then I said I promised you we would talk more about these learning indicators. So the picture codes, remember, were the 10 developmental areas, those areas that are in your state standards. But I know if you dig into your state standards, because I have, you're going to find all these codes in there that correspond to specific skills. So let's say under the area of language development, right? You might have four specific skills. Well, we do too. 
we call them learning indicators. That's what these little codes are all about, and I'll, I'll show you where you can find exactly what each of one of these codes means. But in GWIS, for instance, for language development, we have four different codes, LD1, LD2, LD3, and LD4. Um, they correlate to specific skills. And we have a, a booklet, actually called Connecting the Dots, that helps you connect these specific skills to your formal assessment tool. Let's say you use Teaching Strategies Gold, Ages and Stages, the DRDP, the OUNCE, whatever you're using. I guarantee in there, for instance, there's going to be a skill that has something to do with fine motor control. So if you look at any of our activities and you see the code uh, PD5, that's our PD5 equals small motor. So you'll know, for instance, when they do the activity, let's say hydrated, you're going to address small motor skills. And you could connect those dots to your formal assessment. I'll explain that in just a second when I show you that piece. Um, after that, we do have a book list. So you can look in your own library. You can look in your library where you live and see if there's any of those books that you'd like to gather. Um, any of the songs we write to tunes you should know, and they will be in the back. There's just not room to put them in there themselves. And then in the very, very back, I will put printable materials that are for you to make your life easier. So we're going to do an activity where we seriate bones and we're going to sort them by size. And I thought, well, bone pattern might be helpful instead of trying to cut your own bones. So these patterns are really for you to help you cut bones for an activity we're going to do in the teaching guide. Um, if let's say we're doing a unit on farm animals, I know not everybody has farm animals on hands. I'll give you a, a printed sheet of farm animals, a cow, a pig, a horse, whatever. You can print them out, put them on, tape them to blocks, tape them to small empty boxes, whatever you want. But then you'll have farm animals that children can use for dramatic play or in the block center or whatever. If there's something that I need or I feel like you're going to need in the teaching guide and I can make your life a little bit easier, I'll put it back here. Um, in October, I know we're doing a unit about harvesting. We're going to talk about um, we're talking about farmers markets, so I gave you a sheet of play money. Um, so anything that can make your life a little bit easier is going to be in the back of the teaching guide. Um, so any questions, comments, anything I can answer at this point about the teaching guide and how our lesson plans are designed to make your life a little bit easier. Those who are customers, does it make your life easier? I hope you say yes. <laughs> And if not, we would love your feedback. <laughs> yeah. What could it what could it what could it have to make your life easier? Exactly. Um, okay. No comment, but um I'll give you just a minute in case you need to a little bit longer. Uh so they are saying yes, it helps. That's All right. the customer I recognize that name. So okay. All right, so that's just one component. Oh, I got one. The Spanish English is also a good tool to uh, meet quality standards. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And all the family components, whether it's the family letter, the All About and Week report, um, the uh, the little booklets, the Let's Read Togethers, the Make It Sheets, any of that that's for the families that goes home is always available in both English and Spanish. And we know that's super important. Um, so I wanna just pop really quickly into connecting the dots because that was what I just mentioned. Remember we saw this chart in the back of the teacher's guide with all these little codes. All right, so if you pull up your connecting the dots component, you're gonna see what LD1 means. LD1, the skill is understand spoken language. What this component does is it lists over here all the activities in this unit, this unit alone that address that skill. All right, and this goes through 40 different skills. So let me scroll down here. Let's find a, for instance, a math skill. Let's go right here. I think this is math. No, that's creative arts. I can never remember what color is what. Math is up here. I'm pretty sure it's orange. Okay. So yes, math. MK1 is understands that numbers tell how many, how many, and these are all the activities in this unit that address that skill. So if you look at your state standards, if you look at your formal assessment. There are going to be specific, there's going to be some kind of a code like this that has letters and numbers that's going to say this correlates to this. Our state standard chart does that for you on a broad way and a broad sense. So we have a state standard chart that will show you and I can give you show you an example. Um, let's say you're in Ohio. 
we will have Ohio's code and what it means, and then on the right-hand side, we'll have our code that correlates to it. But this goes deeper because what this does is it says within this unit of so strong, these are the specific activities that are addressing this specific skill. So we've tried to tie everything together for you. So you have your picture codes for the developmental areas, you have these little codes that correlate to the specific skills, and then this component, which ties it all together. All right, so that's a really important component, that connecting the dots piece. Um, these are all of the files that are included in this one unit. So as you can see, they're quite extensive. I think there's about 20 of them. So again, some of them, like the Let's Read Together booklet, you know, if you're going to use that, you'll want to print it out for each child. And there's an option to print front to back or just print it two pages. But some of the things like the family letter, you know, you can download this and just email it to your parents or guardians. Um, so it's really up to you. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on all the other activities or all the other components except for one, and I want to go into letters and literacy because this is a big deal. So let's say you have children who are ready to talk about letters, letter sounds, syllables, words, sentences, all that good stuff. Remember when I said we don't do it in a specific fashion, like there's not going to be A, B, C of the week or whatever. Instead, what we do is this. Remember we looked in the lesson plans and we saw, for instance, this activity called Let's Stay Hydrated, where they're making their own drinking cups. Perfect act opportunity to talk about the letters in each child's name. Okay, so it explains, here's the activity, the page in the teacher's guide, what letters you can reinforce and how you're going to do it. Same thing here. Muscles, muscles. Perfect act activity to talk about the letter M but it's also going to be a good time to talk about some other letters as well. We do a lot of writing down as we say things, like we might write the words. It says, print the word muscles on a sheet of paper as they watch and talk about it as you do so. Talk about the letter M. Do any of them have a, letter, a, a name that begins with the same letter or the same sound? There are six, usually six or seven activities in this booklet that can be used for those children who are ready to go a little bit further and a little bit farther with letters, letter sounds, all of that. And the reason we didn't write it into the teaching guide was because so many of the children that you care for are not ready for that yet. And so it didn't make sense to put it in there and take up space when we could just create another component and say, hey, if you have these children and they're ready, use the letters and literacy to help you integrate letters into the activities. And then it's also done in a very meaningful way, not in isolation. Um, any questions at all about any of that before I move on? to our brand new component. And I think you're going to love the new component, but I have no questions, Beth. <laughs> All right, so we did, as before I leave this page, for those of you who are customers, we recently added this button here where you can download all the files at one fell swoop. Just know it is zipped, which means you're going to have to unzip it. Um, and there are wonderful because I couldn't figure out how to do it the first time I did it either um, there are wonderful YouTube videos depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC you can just Google and say how to unzip files on a, on a PC or how to unzip files on a Mac and it'll walk you through it's, it's very simple you just have to click it and then click it again but anyway you are able now to download all the files we didn't do that before because not everybody wants all the files some people like to pick and choose the ones they're going to use they don't really Really want or need all of them so you can still do them individually by doing what I did today you just simply click on it let's do the story props you're going to click on it over here you're going to download it and save it and then here's where you would print it so and again I'm on a PC it's going to look a little different on a Mac but just wanted to let you know people had asked us to do this and so that's why we added it was again customer feedback so that's why I'm always saying hey if you have feedback share it with us because we really do care what you have to think, and we really do want it to be easier for you. All right, we, so. We also have a webmaster that really helped us with that. But I, I would tell you, and Beth, you can see it later, we got lots of comments that people really like that feature. So, good, good, so. good. But again, our goal is to make things easier. That's really what we want to do. All right, so this is not even posted, so I'm going to bring it up on Acrobat. This is our new weekly activity plan, and it's going to show up in the September units. There will be one, obviously, one activity plan for each unit. So this is for the unit of my five senses. 
I looked at numerous states across the country, and there's no way to make everybody happy. But a lot of states required a block plan, and so what I did is I kind of looked at different states and combined and added and messed around and came up with this. So what I've done is in a snapshot, I've just put in each box, for instance, day one, here's what we're doing, our small groups, here's what we're doing, our infant, here's what we're doing, our transition, here's what we're doing. And I added something you could do outside if you so chose. That's not in the lesson plans. That's kind of like a bonus. Here's what I would suggest. Oh, and I added this. So if you want to add, you know, your own notes about what you're adding to your interest centers, like if you're adding more materials based on this day, you can put it there. Here's what I would do. If there's something here you're not going to do, I would just put an X over it that you're not going to do it. But the real goal behind this was to make it easier for you all to have something to post. I mean, we all know that what's posted and what actually happens <laughs> is very rarely the same thing. I taught kindergarten and there were so many days I was like, I got to the end of the day, I'm like, okay, what exactly out of my lesson plans did we get done today? Because then there was a fire drill and then, you know, you had this happen and then an activity went long and then somebody came in and anyway, you get it. So there's one page for each week. That was day, uh, week one. Here's week two. And again, I just took what was in the teacher's guide and did a little snippet in each box so that you can now post a block plan. So this is our weekly activity plan. It will be showing up in the September units. Um, hopefully, this will make everybody's life a little bit easier, save you a little bit of time. Um, I know it's not going to be perfect and it won't work exactly right for everybody, but at least it's something and hopefully it's better than nothing. So um, current customers, any feedback? Do you think this is helpful, not helpful? Will you use this? Will you not use this? Thoughts, ideas? And those of you who are not customers, would this be something that you would definitely use if you chose to subscribe to GWiz? Comments I'm getting are yes, they will use it and they really like it. Um, and it may be once you see it in September, it might you might get a better feel for it. Thank you for this. I would just print page three and post that or the couple of pages that you went. Thumbs up. Love it. All good comments, Beth. Well, good. That's good. And, and yes, a lot of people do that, too. They print that third page of the teacher's guide and post that as well. I mean, that's a just an overview with the names of the activities. This just gets into a little more detail for those of you who needed it. Well, good. I'm glad I'm glad that you know, you're going to find it, hopefully find it helpful. That again is our goal and that's why we really care about customer feedback and we really do try to listen um, to what our, our folks are saying. So with that, I'm going to go back to our website because I want to point out a couple things too. So I never ever can remember to talk about how much the curriculum costs, um, but if you scroll down on our homepage, for those of you who are not customers, there's a button here where you can see pricing, and um, it's $24.95 for a month, and let's see if it'll open on mine since I'm already logged in. Oh, it did. Good. All right. Uh, $68.95 for a quarter, and our best deal is uh, the yearly price of $245.95. Now, that being said, you can cancel at any time. You can start this and try it for a couple months and say, mm, this just didn't work out for me, and you can cancel. But this is not something where you're locked in um, for a long term at all. The other thing I want to highlight for those of you, because I promised that I would, who are not customers, under training and support, we do have a special offer running um, with back to school. So be sure you check that out because if you use the Save Big 2023 code, it will save you some money on your first either monthly, quarterly, or yearly payment. And then those of you who are new maybe to GWiz or thinking about GWiz, getting started is super easy with these onboarding webinars. There are three of them, I mean, excuse me, four of them. They're only 30 minutes long. And they're broken up so that you can learn how to use the curriculum. So this talks about all the components and how you use them. This talks about understanding how those 10 developmental areas are addressed. A lot of what I did tonight, but in much more detail. And then our third one is about adapting and individualizing the curriculum. And the last one is how we tie in with formal assessment. For each one, you just click the button to watch it. 
you come back to our website when you're done you click here you do a post assessment it's 10 questions a lot of multiple choice once you answer that a link will pop up so you can get your certificate of attendance um, and speaking of certificate of attendance for tonight under the webinar training tab not onboarding but webinar training this is where we will post the link to the recording right here once we're done we'll post the recorded one here so if you want to go back and review we'll post it here and then we're going to post something right here below this it'll say click here for certificate of attendance and you can get your certificate for this one here that's because normally our webinars are about an hour and a half long and most states that are uh, requiring tr that, that um, recognize our training need it to be an hour and a half and this was just an overview so we couldn't really do that for this one but we can have you print out if you want to print out a certificate of attendance just that you attended and you learned about gee whiz um, we're going to post that here probably tomorrow so with that said, it looks like we're at 7.55, speaking of time. I'd like to take any and all questions you have right now before we wrap it up for the evening. Anything at all that I can answer? Um, no questions at this time. But like Beth said, the recording will be there tomorrow and the certificate. Um, so you'll be able to download your own certificate, which is pretty good. There is no post-assessment. Uh, so I think we're good, Beth. I don't have any questions. All right. Well, I thank you all for taking the time to join us. I hope you found this helpful. Um, those of you who are customers, thank you so much for being customers. Please spread the word about GWIS. Those of you who are not customers, we would love to have you try us for the new school year. Now's the perfect time. Um, again, be sure to go under training and support and go to the special offer so you can save some money on your first one. Um, but if there are no questions, I hope you all have a great night. If you, oh, by the way, if under send us an email, on the same tab, if you have any questions that come up after this and you need help with anything, just go to training and support, send us an email, fill out the little form and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I always forget to cover that. So, um, or you can send it to customer service at gwizeducation.com too. That well, is the best place because most of the time you'll get off and say, oh, I forgot to ask that. So you've got a place to send it to us and we'll reach out to you. Exactly. Um, just give me a minute to get the certificate posted and it will probably be tomorrow for the video because that takes a while to download. All right. Any questions before we wrap it up? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Anything anybody wants to add? Uh, quiet. Good. Okay. It's Tuesday. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All, all right. right. Well, then we'll say good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.